Our apologies for uh, that uh, break. We're back now with our first story. And after weeks of signaling its intention to block the approval of an 80 million CD allocation to fund the National Cathedral Project, the minority in Parliament successfully scuttled the allocation. Government had allocated the amount to fund the controversial project despite public pressure to change course. Finance Minister Keno Forietta has now withdrawn the allocation. There'll be more on that shortly. First, though, here are some majority members of Parliament arguing in favour of the allocation. I was... I, he had, the majority, minority leader has forgotten. I was in an aircraft with him someday, very, very late. And when the aircraft was breaking through the clouds, the, the, the turbulence was so much that everybody was shouting, Oh God, oh Jesus, oh God, oh Allah. That's what was happening. He was there. He himself was shouting. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when soldiers are going to war and they are about to go and fight, those who are Christians go on their knees to pray to God. And those who are Muslims go on their knees and bow down to pray to Allah. Mr. Speaker, there is nothing, there is nothing more important to us as human beings to believe that there's somebody out there who created us. Is this budget, how much is captured in this budget? And we say that we should spend 80 million 80 million cities on God, and people have a problem with it. I don't. Me and my family, the members on this side, don't. And I want the Christian community to know from today that we don't. This project is estimated to cost $382 million. Mr. Speaker, so far, the amount expended is 339 million Ghana cities, not dollars. And the last speaker was saying that we have spent more than 30% as envisaged in the construction document. Mr. Speaker, 339 million Ghana cities is nowhere near 10% of the project cost. So there is no over, over expenditure in respect of the construction. Mr. Speaker, the National Cathedral is coming under the Monuments and Museums Board. Mr. Speaker, this is an edifice that will also provide us with the basic infrastructure for tourism as we expect our tourism potential to be harnessed. I want to end by also supporting the budget for this year's pilgrimage so that people from Ghana can also undertake this pilgrimage this year under the budget which we are, uh, we are passing today. So, Mr. Speaker, it is good that our Muslim brothers are in support of this project because we need to equalize and get also something out of the Ghanaian expenditure for our Christian brothers also. Now, the minority side also forcefully argued that the allocation was misplaced and had to be rejected. Watch MP for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George, and MP for Esunafo South, Eric Opoku, state their position. By putting it on record, that as an elder of a church, and as a Bible-believing Christian, we on this side are not against the building of a cathedral. And this is what the Bible we believe in says to us. In Luke 14, 28 to 30, is there anyone here planning to build a new house, in this case a cathedral, who doesn't first sit down to figure out the cost so you know if you can complete it? If you only get the foundation laid, and Mr. Speaker, the Bible is so telling. The Bible knew Ghana will have a president called Akufuadu. This is what he says. If you only get the foundation laid and then run out of money, you are going to look pretty foolish. Everyone passing by will poke fun at you. He started something he couldn't finish. This is the way of the law. Don't you look foolish because you 
have only laid a foundation and run out of money. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is not some judge, this is the Bible. <laughs> you don't go to church. The Bible, in the Bible, God calls only one man, a man after his own heart. And that man was David, a man after God's own heart. A man that the finance minister aspires to be like in vain. But you see, Mr. Speaker, even when David wanted to build a temple for God, a man, he called a man after his own heart. He said, you have blood on your hands. And for that sake, you cannot build me a temple. So he puts together the materials for the temple for his son. Mr. Speaker, I end by remembering the lost eight citizens who lost their lives in the 2020 elections. There is blood on their hand. Can we build a temple for God? Thank you very much, Rachel. Then you come here to defend the indefensible. One day, all of us, including Mr. Speaker, will appear before the throne of the Almighty God. That day, Mr. Speaker, several questions will be posed to us. Many of us will run away because of what we are doing today. We have a duty to protect lives. We have a duty to ensure that our people are fed. Mr. Speaker, this is the time that every Ghanaian is suffering. While well, staying in Parliament, Deputy Majority Leader Alexander Afenyo Marking announced that Finance Minister Ken Oforietta had accepted to withdraw the allocation and channel same to roads and communications. With all the concerns raised, we will not shut our eyes to them. I will therefore, Mr. Speaker, end here by inviting this House to patiently wait for the Finance Minister to make to make a statement, Mr. Speaker, um, having having listened to ourselves on this 80 million cities, Mr. Speaker, it's our proposal to the finance minister, which proposal he 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 is not opposed to, that since many of us file questions on roads, many of us file questions on roads. We, for the time being, Mr. Speaker, without letting this affect appropriation, Mr. Speaker, Finance Minister is in agreement that we know that this 80 million will find space in communication and roads. Mr. Speaker, that is going to be, yeah. Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, that's the beauty of democracy. Meanwhile, the 2.5% uh, VAT rate increment has been passed by Parliament despite resistance from the minority. While still on the subject, pressure group Justice for Ghana is demanding an immediate return of all funds utilized towards the construction of the controversial National Cathedral. Salam uh, Dramani Dramado speaks for the group. Nap Napco victims and National Service personnel who have not been paid while well, David Ajay was paid 113 million upfront for no work done. Be immediately be paid from savings made by parliament stopping the 80 million budgeted for, budgeted for the cathedral. That the entire Ghana is not allowed to come to a standstill due to, the, to, due to Ghana's labor union's threat of an indefinite strike action from next week. That the parliament intervenes to avert the, the, the threats of teachers, doctors, nurses, and indeed every, work, every worker in all sectors staying home till government makes a U-turn. Ghanaians who are already suffering from the economic crisis are being threatened with further nuisance taxes, including VAT which the president in the 90s implacably stood against. Government's haircut on investment, including an increase in VAT and removal of the E-Levy threshold to cushion, their poor, to cushion the poor, is resisted by parliament on behalf of the, the government.
Ukrainian people. In our next story, traditional authorities at Gbi Bagbe are asking the Inspector General of Police to constitute a non-prejudiced committee to investigate the alleged killing of a young man by the police. The aggrieved residents want the committee to make public its findings and ensure those found culpable are punished. Divisional Chief of Gbi Bagbe, uh, Togbe Ke, uh, the 12th, says a police team fired into a crowd on December 9, 2020, during an operation in the community, killing Bismarck, Charles Opari. According to reports, a police team stormed the Gbibegbe community about 11 p.m. on 9 December 2022 for an operation. The chiefs narrated that 29-year-old Bismarck Charles Opari, a taxi driver, was allegedly shot and killed during the operation. Sources indicated that the police team was not from the Volta North Regional Command but from the intelligence unit of the Volta Regional Command, hence operated out of their jurisdiction. Addressing the press, the divisional chief of Bivegbe, Togbe Ken the 12, said the police officers were unprofessional in the discharge of their duties. The unprofessional manner in which the police officers conducted themselves resulted in the shooting and death of Bismarck, who authorized the operation to be carried out at that hour, who was the leader of the operation team, who authorized the release of the vehicles and the weapons used, who are the officers involved, who is their immediate superior in whom, to whom have they reported the outcome of the operation to, and where the booties are, seven, where the officers concerns consent, have to shoot live bullets into a group of armless civilians, resulting in loss of human life. Having gunned down the unarmed innocent taxi driver, the police whisked off to an unknown destination. He therefore implored the police hierarchy to launch an investigation into the unfortunate incident and bring the perpetrators to book. In view of the above questions and observations, we, the chiefs, elders, and citizens of Mivegbe, urgently request the IGP to set up a non-prejudiced committee to conduct an in-depth investigation into the course of the operation leading to the murder of one of our up-and-coming sons. The report which hopefully should be made within two weeks from the date of this release, that is Wednesday 21st, 2022, should be made public, public, especially to the chiefs and elders and families of the victim. Those found culpable should be dealt with accordingly. Above all, adequate compensation be given to the bereaved family. The chiefs and residents stressed that they would not condone wrongdoing but would seek fairness and justice for peace to prevail in their community. Fred Kwame Asai, Joy News, Be Vegbe. Now, seven more districts in the Ashanti region have been invaded by illegal miners despite increased efforts to stop the menace. Out of the 43 districts in the region, 25 are now afflicted by Galamsey. The Regional Security Council has increased surveillance uh, to prevent the threat from spreading to new places. Nanai Aljima filed this report. A visit of the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, John Abujinapo, to some affected areas in the Amansia district in September this year revealed deep pits opened all over a vast area. The phenomenon, despite renewed operations to stop illegal miners, has continued with more acres of land being destroyed. Some miners sit in rivers and water bodies to perpetrate the illegality. Ashanti Regional Minister Simon Osei Mensa addressed a meeting of the Regional Coordinating Council. The Galamse fight in the region has not yet been won and still is rather expanded. Previously, we could count about 18 districts in the Ashanti region where Galamsey is practiced. Unfortunately, now the number has gone up to 25 
districts out of the 43. And we need to take this one seriously. Already, the Regional Coordinating Council, through its enhanced surveillance, has stopped the spread of the activity to the Efijakwabri district. The effort to fight the menace is, however, hindered by financing. No, sometimes people don't know that it's, uh, water issues are also security issues. So what we need to do is to take drastic measures to ensure that uh, we can minimize the issues of Galamsee menace within the region. I've always suggested that on the river bodies, I think, we can take the fight from the source of the river up to where it either joins the sea or the confluence of another uh, river body. Constant thrashing of these people was that to help solve the problem. But sometimes you have logistical problems. At times uh, you, you need even money, you want the military to move, you don't have the resources to support the military. So these are all challenges that we are facing. But I know the ministry is doing its best. Uh, Quite often, they also send people from Accra to also come and work on them. We will do our best to bring the menace down. Meanwhile, the minister has endorsed the Asante Hines call to hold traditional authorities accountable for illegal mining in their jurisdictions. But most importantly, the statement by Utum Fosse to the second the Asante Hines recently uh, during the regional house of chief meeting for which I attended is, is a strong signal to all the chiefs and if well implemented it will help bring the menace down significantly because there's no area where we don't have a chief and then Otunfo is also saying that if we find Garamsi in your area it means uh, you are part so Otunfo invite you to Manja and then question you interrogate you about why you still have Garamsi in your area because as he put it uh, if somebody had come to encroach on your land. Definitely you have reported the case. So if you find illegal miners on, on your land, why don't you report? The Ashanti Regional Coordinating Council is strategizing to improve performance in the coming year. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima, Kumasi. It's a wrap for the news. Stay with us up next, the news review, as we are joined by Bridget Jogbenuku.